Are you really ready to stack? Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. What kind of question is that, Yankee? <laughs> Are you really ready to stack? <laughs> well, of course I am. I'm ready. I've been ready for a long time. You might think everybody is ready to stack. But don't be so sure. What I'm going to focus on most in this video is how I help my Yankee Cannon members with their questions about financial decisions. A lot of them are like, Yankee, how do I stack better? Or I'm really focused on stacking, but I need some help. You know, what would Yankee do? And I'm going to say it right here, the classic disclaimer, I am not a professional financial advisor. Um, I tell this to everybody that uh, works with me um, over the phone, right off the bat. I'm not a financial advisor by trade. I am not certified to do it, but I do have a long history of wealth planning and a lot of experience in many areas of investing. And I love to help people in you know, just so many different areas of financial planning and prepping and stacking. I mean, quite frankly, most professional financial advisors rarely discuss those last two areas, prepping and stacking. But first ask some really key questions. I and mean, then I run through them with people over the phone and, and it helps me, you know, understand the, the, the basis of where people are financially, what their you know goals are, uh, what their outlook is. You know the whole glass half empty or half full, right? You know are they you know more optimistic or pessimistic about the future and how they view money itself. That really helps me, and it and it just gives me a sense of 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 who they are when they call. So in fact, Friday night, last Friday, um, I had a two hour conversation with a wonderful woman who was extremely forthcoming. I mean, she offered everything up, felt very comfortable in discussing it with me. I, I, I didn't even have to ask my usual questions that I do um, because she was just like, Yankee, this is where I'm at. You know, I, I need to understand everything, right? You know, and then she was very, very uh, open with me. And, you know, I let the conversation flow. The discussion was very natural, uh, but but there's a framework that I try to uh, use to make sure that the, you know, the conversation covers all the bases. And I'm going to tell you what those four areas are that I like to discuss. And it really would help you guys to understand it if you're questioning or maybe you aren't questioning. Maybe you don't even know if you really are ready to stack, at least in any large way. So let me give you the four you know, main areas that I like to focus on, fiscal soundness, fiscal soundness. So I spend some time talking with people about their assets and liabilities or, or debt. Um, you know, are they living within or even under their means? And do, do they have a revolving consumer debt? Um, you know, it, it makes very little sense, in my opinion, to be stacking silver and you know, gold. <laughs> oh, hold on. There we go. I got to turn it over to my favorite maple leaf. <laughs> it makes, you know, I don't know. I, I just don't think it makes a, a, a lot of sense to be stacking hard if you're paying double digit interest rates on your credit cards. And, and then I talk about, you know, income and expenses, you know, expenses like food and utilities, all the, you know, month to month uh, expenses that you have, you know, what is your income? Where are you actually spending your currency? Where's it going? Do you have a budget? I mean, a literal budget, not just one in your head. Okay. And are you following that budget? Here's a here's a little Yankee stacking story. About 25 years ago, when Mrs. Yankee and I got married, 
um, I came into the uh, marriage with a lot of uh, financial experience, uh, you know, young guy <laughs> financial experience, but I did have it, especially, um, you know, growing up, having parents that really understood what real money was and, and how to save and how to spend and how to budget. And I remember my mom, you know, setting up a budget with me as a teenager when I first got my job and, you know, my first job. And it was, it was great. You know, she, she had all the columns. It was in paper form, of course. And, and she, she said, you know what, Yankee, you know, listen, you don't have a lot of expenses, but it's good to start out with just a little that you do have. And so you'll build on that. When you're an adult, when you grow older, you're going to have more and more. And this is the framework you should use, a budget, right? So <laughs> I got married and I remember showing that to Mrs. Yankee and I'll never forget her face and her comment. She looked at me and she's like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> She had like a really big aversion to that little red, um, you know, uh, uh, book that I had for, for my budget. So what I did was like, whoa, okay, all right, that's fine. I had to, I had to do it tactfully over a while to, to show how empowering, how liberating a budget is, how you can feel the freedom to actually spend when you know you have the resources to spend. And, and I um, got rid of the paper form, <laughs> created a, a, a spreadsheet and kind of walked, you know, her through it, worked with her and then gave it to Mrs. Yankee. Just said, it's yours. Didn't take long for her to understand just how powerful that budget was. Was it hard? Yeah, a little bit. Is it hard for people who maybe don't have a lot of good spending habits or have a lot of debt? Yeah, it is. But listen to me here. Listen. In fact, this may be the most important thing I'll say. The hard journey to fiscal soundness is incredibly rewarding. The journey. The actual process of becoming fiscally stable, you know, fiscally sound. So that's where I start. Uh, in fact, I, I, I strongly recommend that is the first place <laughs> that you start looking at before you begin stacking in any significant way. Before. That's hard. Most people just get excited about the shine and they're like, well, oh, you know, Yankee, everybody needs this stuff, right? <laughs> you got to have it. And they neglect the more important things fiscally. So number one, number two, I talk about the second area is investment savviness. Where are you growing your wealth? All right. So this is a hot topic. I've heard it said that everybody is an expert in their own investment portfolios. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is where a professional financial advisor and I might actually agree on, on a biggie here. And that is gold and silver make lousy investments by and large. Okay. I, I think that that is the case. And you might be triggered by that, especially if you haven't uh, watched my channel much. If you don't know that, I don't think this is a tremendous great investment, the physical uh, silver and gold bullion. Where we may disagree, or you know, my, uh, a financial advisor and myself, is the opportunity to make money with gold and silver mining stocks or, or, or uh, ETFs. Those are, are almost completely ignored by many professional financial advisors. So uh, I, I think uh, in this area, I think it's really important uh, to make sure you've established a solid retirement plan. And this is this is especially important for those that are young. Do not count on Social Security to be there for you in any me you know, meaningful way. You need to establish a retirement plan. You need to be, you know, investing in, uh, you know, your company's uh, sponsored 401k and IRA, especially if there's a match. And, you know, also check out 
self-directed IRAs. Those are much more flexible than a regular IRA. Um, so anyways, what I do is I ask people if their investment strategy is really aligned with their goals, their risk tolerance, their overall outlook on the economy, you know, you know both short ter- short term and long term. You know, is their portfolio too aggressive, too passive? I talk about these things with, with them and I really try to get them to think about their investment strategy. The third area I focus on is crisis preparedness. Where are you protecting yourself? Now, again, you're not going to hear much about this from a traditional financial advisor. Some people will take this lightly. Some will take it (laughs) to extreme measures, right? Depending on just how uh, prepared you want to be. But with all that has transpired over the last, what, three months? And even now over the last week. If you haven't given crisis preparedness much thought, I urge you to do it, to start right now. And some of the areas that you might need to be focused on is uh, cash reserves. This is very important. Cash. You need to have some cash on hand. Now, some say to have enough cash, you need to ensure that you could get your family at least a hundred miles away from home, feed them for three days, and house them for three days and three nights. Okay, that's 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 a neat little rule of thumb. Some say you should have three months worth of cash on hand at any time. Some say six months. I've heard it said that eight months is a good uh, target because. That tends to be the average amount of time it takes to find a new job. Some say a whole year worth of cash, but whatever. It all depends specifically on your situation. However, I do advocate the removal of all savings from a public bank or credit union. I know they're FDIC insured and all that, but I say you should take it out. Leave some money in the checking account for, you know, your direct deposit with your work, uh, uh, you know, ATM convenience, paying your monthly bills. That's fine. I get that. But savings, get it out. Be the bank. Establish a private bank, if you will, at home in one or more secure places and make sure that you tell a trusted individual other than yourselves. You know, they, they, they need to know uh, where it is just in case something happens to you. But that is important, cash reserves. And just as I hope all of you have car insurance and health insurance and life insurance, uh, homeowners or rental insurance, I hope you also all have food insurance water insurance, personal protection insurance, and inflation insurance. Now that last one brings me to the fourth and final area that I like to discuss, and it's the one where precious metals falls under. And I hope you're, I hope you're getting to why I asked the question I did at the very beginning. Are you really ready to stack And this fourth area is a big one, wealth preservation. This is one where I think a lot of financial advisors actually ignore. Not all, but many. Everybody is so busy trying to get rich that they miss out on securing their wealth. I, I I just watched a video. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, Robert Kiyosaki. He wrote a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He he, he has a a channel. I listen to him sometimes. And he said this, being rich is measured in dollars. Being wealthy is measured in time. Think of it this way. If you had a million dollars in savings, but you're spending $100,000 a month, your real wealth is 10 months. I mean, the math isn't that difficult, right? A million divided by 100,000 a month, 10 months. 
That's your wealth. You could be rich, but not very wealthy. This harkens back to what my dad taught me as a kid and what he used to say. It's not how much you make, Yankee. It's what you keep. And that gets back to the whole, you know, fiscal soundness that I talked about. But it's also about other things too, like tax avoidance, not tax evasion. Okay, that's that's illegal, but tax avoidance. Also, hedging your wealth, hedging against inflation. And that is what this is such a great thing. This is what silver and gold do such a great job at protecting you against inflation. And stacking is an incredibly smart thing to do. Gold, silver, preferably, you know, more recognizable stuff and not high premium stuff. But I strongly recommend that, you know, yes, while you're making your money in a variety of different ways, you also earmark a percentage of your overall portfolio to preserving it. So those are the four areas that I focus on when I'm trying to help people in the community answer that important question. Are you really ready to stack? I hope that uh, prompted some questions or, or at least some thoughts in your mind. If you have questions about anything I discussed, If you even disagree with me, I I am absolutely open to that as well. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe as usual. And as always, I hope your day is a okay.